All right, all right. What's going on, everybody? God bless y'all. Hope everybody's still doing well. I want to dive right into this video. Title says, I'm a tent maker. I am a tent maker. And I want to go back to Apostle Paul for a moment. You know, we got a lot of people saying that you shouldn't take care of a pastor or elder, however you want to say the name. And uh, I notice a lot of people been debating about this and they go back to the scriptures um, talking about how Paul was a tent maker. And I want to give a shout out to my girl, Miss Beverly 01 also. Uh, I'm going to cover those questions you asked me in the email. So that's why I want to title this video, I'm a tent maker. Because Paul actually did support himself pretty much. But we also see where they offered to pay Paul. And Paul made tents and let me say this off topic because I don't want nobody to twist up what I'm about to say. Because I believe in taking care of the elders. I believe in people, you know, being compensated for their work. I believe when the Bible says serving is worthy of its hire. But what I don't agree with is people trying to get rich, abusing people with God's word, taking scriptures to make people feel guilty and and, and, and trying to preach this fake prosperity gospel there's nothing wrong with prosperity but i got a problem with the abuse of prosperity when people are lying on god's word and the problem is it's it's too many people trying to get rich off of the gospel we see a lot of times where if you walk off in most churches all you're going to hear is begging for money begging for money we got to take up money for this take up money for that paul wasn't trying to get rich off of the gospel. As a matter of fact, let's go back to Jesus. Jesus came in as a servant, willing to serve. Now, if the Lord of Lord, King of King, Lord of Lord comes in as a servant to show us to be a servant, something is seriously wrong when we see all these people trying to get rich off of the gospel and, and just only want to talk about prosperity, but not telling you about prosperity meaning that your soul is prospering also something is wrong with that jesus came in to serve but we also can go back to peter and some of the others in the early christian church and we can see how they devoted themselves all the way to the ministry and they lived off the money that was donated by the church members now paul worked day and night paul worked hard because another reason why I believe Paul didn't really want to accept, you know, nothing. I believe that was the Corinthians, if I'm not mistaken. Paul didn't want to be a burden to the church. Because believe it or not, you got some churches out here that really want to take care of they, you know, they faithful ones. But they just really don't have the money to do it. And then you got churches that are abusing they faithful ones. And then you got these churches where they got the money, but it's only a lot of the pastors just trying to get rich. See, Paul didn't want to be a burden. Now, look at how many, uh, look, look at how Paul worked so hard in his life. And at the same time, Paul was still able to be all about the ministry too. So I always thought, I always look at that also. And I bet a lot of times Paul was just wore out. Because when you are full-time in, in ministry, you can become very wore out. They offered, but this is the thing, they offered to pay Paul. They offered to pay Paul. And in other words, Paul was also saying, I'm a tent maker. I'm really not going to sit around and wait, you know, for other people to take care of me. I got a job. I'm making tents. I don't even want y'all to focus on paying me. Now, if y'all want to give me little gifts and everything, I understand that I, I appreciate y'all. I, I, I'm thankful. I'm grateful that y'all are even offering me this. But my focus is not on getting paid. This is the mentality. This is the way that Paul was. And we got preachers right now. You take away their salary. They won't preach. Let's just be real. But you got the preachers that want to tell the minister of music. Well, you don't need to get paid. Well, if you tell a preacher he won't get paid, then... He got a problem with you. So Paul was letting them know, I don't want I don't want y'all to have a headache behind this. I make tents, I'm good. Now, 
if it was like that nowadays in a lot of churches, it, 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 let, let's just, let's fast forward to nowadays and use Paul as if Paul was right here right now. If Paul had to wait around, if just say he wasn't a tent maker and he had to wait around for some churches to take care of him, Paul would starve to death. He would, need, he would be broke and homeless. See, somebody going to get mad at that statement, and I don't even care because I'm talking about the churches that do this, not everybody, church. You got faithful people who are being drove to the ground because they done gave their life for the ministry, and they are not even being taken care of. And it shouldn't be no such thing as this man is hurting in here or this woman is hurting in here. Shouldn't be no such thing as a poor church. I stated this in one of my old videos. I I I just I can't believe so so many of these churches that I see around here and when I go out of town, these churches look like crack houses. They can't even get the roof fixed. People to start up a building with anything and don't even care. And I'm not saying that to down nobody. I'm saying that if most if most churches would teach stewardship and learn to be about the father business, seeking the kingdom first, instead of steady then instead of trying to just, we got to do this, we got to get a bigger building, we got to get this. Most preachers that I know go at it the wrong way. And they, and they wonder why they stay in the same old situation. Because they don't even believe in what they're standing up talking about half of the time. And if we would do things according to God's word, God is going to take care of the rest. So just, let, let's just think about that for a moment. And like I say, but not everybody is, is like this, and not everybody is trying to get rich. Not everybody. So we can also look through the Bible and see where it was quite a few people that had a job, you know. And I'm not just talking about pastors in this video because you got so many other, you know, things that people have to do in the church. You know, just like deacons are serving in the church. You got ursher serving in the church. You got... Uh, secretaries, trustees, so on and so on. The list get bigger and bigger, but the problem is church once again have became so much of a business. It's nothing but business nowadays. And we, we got so much confusion in the house of God because we don't put so much emphasis on the building when we forget about it at the same time that we are the body of Christ. See, Abraham raised livestock. Joseph was a government official. Joshua was a war general. You see what I'm saying? Even our Lord and Savior Jesus worked as a carpenter. But we also, that's why I'm rightly dividing the word, we also see where people was full time and in the ministry. Now, that was Paul's choice. And he could have gotten paid easily or accepted gifts with no problem. If I'm not mistaken, I believe he did accept a few gifts, but he wasn't big on gifts either. It's a beautiful thing, my brothers and sisters, when people want to appreciate you. Now, I always wondered if Paul would have been a minister of music when he would have looked at it a little different. But I think Paul would have still been focused on, I'm a tent maker, and I, he, wasn't, he wasn't even concerned about money. He was concerned about souls being saved. Man, if we can get preachers to get like that nowadays, a lot more of them, let me say, because everybody's not like that. But how many people do we know they ain't even talking about repenting and salvation? Paul stayed up from the morning to the evening concerned about his brother, his brothers and sisters in, 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 in Christ. And, and if we can learn to have that zeal like that, instead of I just, I'm trying to get rich. I told y'all, I'm going to say this again in this video. I heard a lot of preachers, you know, down talk 50 Cent. When 50 Cent came out with Get Rich or Die Trying, but I said at least 50 Cent was real enough to keep it real about what he was doing and to Get Rich or Die Trying, but these preachers want to down 50, but that's their same mentality in the pulpit, the ones that do this. They're going to get rich or die trying, but the difference is between them and 50, they doing it in the church. They're going to get rich or die trying behind the pulpit, begging the hell out of folks. I know the truth hurt. But like I said, it's a beautiful thing when people want to appreciate you. Y'all know how I feel with, with, with talking about being appreciated and, and knowing those that label amongst you. 
See, these people back then, they gave they, they gave their life. They died for the truth. Paul was so focused on the ministry. Look at Stephen or Stephen, however you want to pronounce it. He died for the truth. Jesus died for the truth. The gospel got them killed. Look at John the Baptist. They gave their life. And here it is. We want to take an easy way out. They didn't get no easy way out. They gave their life. They died in the faith. Oh, but they got eternal life with the Father. Half of these preachers wouldn't dare die for the Lord right now. How many Christians right now would give their life for the Lord when, when we see so many people living a jacked up lifestyle? And I'm talking about ones claiming to be Christians. See, Paul also wanted to make sure that the Corinthians, to whom he was preaching to, they wasn't going to have no reason to question his motives. See, a lot of times when people put you on a payroll, they want to control you. They want to they wanna make sure, they want to tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it. See, many times in the New Testament, uh, I want to say that's Philippians 4 and 10, 16, uh, then 2nd. Second Corinthians chapter 8, 1 through 5, I believe, we see that the churches gave sacrificially to support Paul's work. He commended them for that, for their support. And he reminded them of the eternal profit that they was going to get. See, Paul, I'm just paraphrasing. Paul was saying, I'm not really, I'm not looking for no gift. But I am looking for what may be credited to your account. See, nowadays we see money always being taken up in the church, but we don't see where it's really going, do we? We have a gazillion bake sales. We got a million anniversaries, 330 programs. We got all kind of musicals. We got revivals. We got fish plates in the back. For an extra 50 cents, you can get you another soda water. Y'all know how I go. Cookies, carnivals, so on and so on. This stuff go on for year after year after year, but the church is never getting built. Oh, don't even talk about the business meetings. And when you ask somebody, well, I'm not trying to be funny in this business meeting, but where is the money going? Why we haven't got at least the floor fixed? Why we still got the roof caving in? Why this? Why that? And they ready to put you out of church. So y'all know I'm telling the truth. When you have a business meeting, you got people that show up at the church that ain't been there all year. But this go on for years and years and years. Y'all know something is seriously wrong. See, in the early church, they looked out for each other and they wasn't stuck on no building. And Paul also showed us that church wasn't a building. Jesus showed us because Jesus would go here, there, Man, you can sit up on the tree and have church with the Lord. But nowadays, you got to be in the building to get saved. You got to be in the building to, to know who Jesus is. You got to be in the building for everything. And that's totally not teaching the true word of God to me. So with that being said, y'all, I got me a new saying now. And it's for God I live and for God I die. For God I live, for God I die. I'm going to go ahead and close. Y'all go ahead and... and have a blessed day. Let the church say amen. Love y'all. Take care. Paul said, I am a tent maker. He wasn't stuck on trying to get rich. I hope some of you preachers are listening. Peace.